my beloved people, my heart is with you all over. It's been unbelievable two days. I know so many of my friends' children, including my two children, my grandson, my sister, my, my nephew who's in the war himself in Janine. May they all be protected. I, I am getting like so many calls again and I wanna um, take a call to action. Just like we did, my same volunteers all over the world, and if you weren't part of my team then, now's the time to jump in. We need to be galvanizing our superpowers right now to help those who are in crisis, those who have just gone through so much trauma. I do have to say, just talk to my daughter who's been under the bombings, and. And, and and she says to me, Mom, like, and I hope she's okay with me sharing this, but she's like, I wouldn't exchange this experience for the world. Like to be here with my people, to see what's been going on. And although it's been so jolting and so shattering and so beyond no words can express, like this young, pure neshama to experience, like, you know, such a Holocaust at such a young age, I mean, and all the youngsters that are now going through this. I go back to the day when uh, besides when I was in Crown Heights and I have to bring this to my memory to give me the strength right now to like hopefully be that strength to many more right now. We were up till almost five in the morning during the time of the Mumbai terrorist attack um, and I, I just could not believe the strength of the people. They were like remembering the time when, when the Rebbe had a heart attack and with Simcha's Torah and everyone said like, just try to be, you know, like keep the Simcha, the Rebbe said. It was Simcha's Torah, keep the Simcha. And that's what we were trying to do, this whole Simcha's Torah. The way the Rebbe taught us to be, as hard as it is and as heart-wrenching to know that so many people are suffering. But the Rebbe would say, are we going to just witness or are we going to take action? And so right now we have to take action. So please PM me. I'm going to be enlisting all of you to be on our our campaign to help whatever way we can for those who are now suffering in Israel. I do not believe I'm saying this. I do not believe we're going through this at this time of ending our celebration of our holidays. I can't even believe in this century that it's just, it's, it's, and I kept telling myself, my limited intellect cannot fathom the ways of our Creator, our Father, our everything. We just can't understand. We just can't. And the way we understand that we can't understand, then we have some kind of strength to be an activist and to do what we can to be part of the solution and to do whatever we can to make it better and lighter for someone else who is going through the suffering. I'm now actually in America, but my daughter, my son, my grandson is there. I was supposed to be there. My husband broke his foot and ended up we had to come back. I'm beyond blown away that, that uh, I'm not there with my family. I, I, I mean, it's been so hard not being with them while they're going through this. Um, but for whatever reason, I guess Hashem wanted me to be here, to be able to do whatever I can from here to help there. That's all I can say. Um, so I know that, uh, you know, we have to increase in our tefillah, we have to increase in our learning. We have to increase in doing whatever we can to help those who are suffering. That's even more important, and, you know, or just as important, you know. Um, that's what helped me keep my grounding this whole holiday. No matter what hour I came home, we went from one shul to the next shul and trying to just uh, break through the barriers and, 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 and show Hashem that we trust Him and we know what He's doing is for whatever reason could. And it's hard to see with our own eyes that such a thing could be good. I mean, it's, it's beyond like 
our human capacity to even think that we have a human capacity to be able to um, to even think this way. But all I know is when things like this happen, we have to be an activist, we have to get involved, we have to do what we can. Um, besides the fact that that's what's needed, but it does, you know, help us feel like we're not just, you know, watching by the sidelines. Um, definitely, the Rebbe kept saying and keeps saying in my mind that uh, this is a time to call for duty. This is a time for a call of duty. So I bless all of you. I, I really, there's just no words. There's just no words. I remember my friend who lost two of her family members and she went to the Ohel. And since then I had gone to the Ohel and I saw it with my very own eyes, the Rebbe saying this, when, after I heard what she said, when she lost her second loved one, and she went to the Ohel, and in the video was a woman who lost her son. And the Rebbe actually said, there's no words. There's just no words, nothing. But he did say after that, he said, but when Mashiach comes, you will have every right to demand the answer. This world is a place we're just passing through and we're having birth pangs right now and this is going to lead to a, 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 a birth of a, of, that I guess the world needed. I mean, I don't know, after two years of pandemic and so soon after to go witnessing this tragedy There's just no words. Just no words. The only thing that's going to get us through this is our faith. <laughs> the only thing that's going to get us through this is our absolute trust that all we can rely on is our Father all we can count on, all we can turn to in this time of need is our Father in Heaven. And He is the Father of mercy. And we have to remember that. You have to remember when a, a child had to go through some kind of experience and a parent doesn't want to be the disciplinary, doesn't want to like tell them not to do this, and doesn't want to tell them to safeguard them from that. And we have to just realize, you know, we as parents don't want to do the things that we have to do as a parent. Hashem doesn't want to do this. But for whatever reason, our loving Father, our merciful Father, and Od Milvado, and Od Milvado, exactly. So if you're a therapist, if you're a coach, if you're a friend, if you know how to be a listening ear, if you're just anybody who wants to make a difference in the lives of someone else, please reach out to me, text me, WhatsApp me, um, you know, email me, saneforlife at gmail.com, message me, I will get your numbers. I contacted the people who helped me last time to put an organization together with extra care and extra help so that we can um, galvanize our, our neshamas to help those who are out there. And there are, I'm sure, many, many, many out there need you and need your help, especially if you are Hebrew speaking, um, so that if anybody, you know, needs to get that kind of assistance, um, 
you know, these guys, they all get their systems. May Hashem allow me to witness the miracles of this being over, like just like the six day war, but it'll be like, that's it, one day. And I mean, please allow us all to witness your merciful hand, your loving heart, your caring neshama, when he sees we care, and when he sees we're doing what we can to make a difference, please God, please join me in this initiative, a call to action. I would, I would like to share just even some of the words that I read here while studying, oh my gosh, and maybe this will comfort you, and comfort, and may these words shield everyone in Israel, so beautifully said in this book, uh, Seasons of the Soul. And it said here, and it was like, oh my gosh, it was a real like comfort to me while I was reading this today. <sighs> I'll read it right now. So we know when, when we were shaking the lulav and we were we, we we do it in all the different directions to create a sacred space just like the sukkah is that sacred space so that whatever was collected all year long of all the good deeds that you did that would be able to land sweetly in your heart and um oh my gosh i i can't even tell you i want to read it from here so it says here and when we were shaking every part of this lula, it was also, you know, creating the shaking up of the, the seven spheres. Because it was like the six directions, right, left, up, down, and back, and side, and then all of it coming together, landing in our heart. And this represents the, the seven spheres that we just, like, we just brought this sanctity and this holiness around us. And it's like this, you know, this running and returning. It's like we need to like come to our senses of our neshama and spend the time to um, give it the strength it needs and to dedicate the time to, da to davening and learning and then like leaving and going out to the world and shaking up the world in all the directions and each one representing each of our forefathers giving us the strength to cope and it's like a, 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 a unified field like the unified field theory that's, that's, that's permeating the whole world our belief in Hashem and this declaration of believing that there's only him and only Valdo, and he's the one that's going to get us out of this. And we create this unity with our faith. It's interesting that um, um, wow, let me just tell you all the different people that each one represented, which represented all these holy tzaddikim um, that came to us to give us and infuse us this strength. Now more than ever do we need this. We know that the hundred blasts of shofar was transformed into the hundred that equals schach, and that actually equals lech lecha, 100, that with this power of these holidays, it gave us the strength to go to ourselves, to go to the real selves, the one that has Amuna, the one that has Bitachon. And this is it. When we would shake the lulav above, it was, this was the, the, the sphere of Netzach, victory, victory over this war, victory over the war inside of us as they're shaking and trembling and, and, and can't cope, and the nervousness and the anxiety, victory, which gives our soul security. And this is Moshe Rabbeinu who came to our sukkah to infuse our heart with this strength, the belief in Hashem, and the belief of this 
incredible power of netzach, of victory. And we don't believe in any other thing that's going to help us, just Hashem. And that's when we were shaking the lulav below. The shaking of the below lulav representing, acknowledging that we're not going to believe in any fancy schmancy peace treaties and any fancy schmancy lies and any fancy schmancy fake gods. This is hard. Acknowledging that there's only Hashem and crossing out any other form of salvation. Only Hashem. And when we believe that Hashem is one, this was when we were shaking our lulav to the front, to the east. This is a blend, a beautiful blend. This is Teferis, this is compassion, this is Yaakov, this is, Gav- this is, this is Yaakov. Letting us to feel the compassion of our heart and what everyone else is going through while we might be safe here. But if Israel's not safe, the whole world is not safe. If only the world would know, exactly. Israel must be safe because it is the core of sanity and safety of the whole world. Then we swung our lulav, the lulav representing like a, 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 a weapon of Kedusha, the weapon of Kedusha. Please God, it will melt away all this craziness, this horror. The belief that God is one. Now we're shaking the lulav to the right, to the south. This is Chesed. This is Abraham. This is love. This is our love of Hashem when we need to hold on to our love of Hashem more than ever. When everything's good and we love Hashem and we're so thankful, great. Now we have to take charge and say, I love you no matter what. I love you even though I can't understand how this could have happened. This is what we got from Abraham when he visited us. This is what we got from Yaakov, the Teferis, when he visited us. This is what we got again from Aharon when he visited us. And this is what we got from Moshe. And this is what we get from Yitzchak when he came to our Sukkah. And we shook our lulav to the north, to the left, Gevura, might. The strength to handle this, the strength to help, the strength to do something about it. Let not, you know, I fear no evil. There is no evil. And if it's seemingly evil around us, then we have to galvanize our power to do something about it. Let it not break us. Let us not crumble. Let us not become a pillar of salt. Let's not focus on just what happened. Let's focus on what can be done. Please, Hashem, forgive me. I hope these words help because it's helping me when I read this. Knowing, not knowing what was going on with my own children, my love of my life after eight years of waiting for these children, a bracha from the Rebbe. This is the strength we need that Hashem gave us and gives us every day anew. This is awe of Hashem. This is blown away by even the things that seemingly are really capable of blowing us away and disintegrating, God forbid. Sirens are here, and I feel like it's. While well, I was on the phone with my daughter, Constance, hearing of the the jets and the show, and I'm here, and she's there, and my son, and my grandson, and my daughter-in-law, my sister, all my sisters. I'm gonna get off of here soon after I 
review all this and I didn't want to bother them because the ones that are sleeping, it's like four in the morning, five in the morning there. When we were shaking our lulav to the west, when we were shaking our lulav behind us, this is not straying after our negative thoughts. Oh gosh, we need this right now more than anything. Our thoughts are going to go crazy right now with all the suffering, but we, we have to try our best. If you saw the people shaking a little, if you shook a little, remind yourself, this is shaking up my power of my mind to shake off the negative thoughts. And to have faith that this will turn to good and have faith that this is going to... Oh gosh, I wish it would. I could just say Mashiach now, this second meeting. I won't even have to continue ending this, 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 this mini class here. And it says, and don't go after your heart's desire. Your heart will want to break. Your heart will want to cry and cry your heart. And you have every right to and you have every every power in you to do that if that's what you need but then there's a time we have to say Hashem saw my tears Hashem heard my cries and now I'm going to hear the cries of others and I'm going to gird my loins and do what I can to make a difference in this time and not my negative thoughts drown me and not my negative thoughts give me despair This is Yosef. This is Yesod. This is the foundation. If your brain doesn't have a good foundation, if your brain is all over the place, you cannot be like a Yosef, who in the time of the famine, in the time of when even his brothers wanted to kill him, he rose to the truth of what needed to be done to save his people. He didn't look back. He said, look what's going on here. Look at what can I do now? I have to do what I have to do now. Prayer. This is when we shook the, 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 the lulav to the middle point. The middle point was Malchus, kingdom. This is humbleness, loneliness. This is David Amelech. He humbled himself before Hashem in his misery, in his torturous life, being chased down, being acted like a criminal, and he was a hero and a mighty giant of a neshama. And look what he went through. This is the prayer we've been praying for. We must continue praying and we must continue doing what we can. And these are the constant mitzvahs we have. To believe in the one God, not to believe in other gods. To believe that Hashem is one and on Melvado. To be able to love Hashem constantly and have on wonderment of Hashem constantly. To not stray after our thoughts. And to constantly pray, these are the mitzvahs, the seven mitzvahs that we were shaking up. Please, Hashem, let me wake up from my slumber. Let me wake up from the petty things in the world that used to drive me crazy and make me upset and angry and anxious and see the truth now, more than ever. When we were shaking it up back and forth, we realized we need that time to ourselves to, to, to strengthen ourselves, to, to ground ourselves, to infuse within ourselves the power to then be able to go out there and shake up the world. The Rebbe said, what are we doing? We need to turn over the world. Maybe it's not a time to even say all this. And I ask for your forgiveness. All I know is that I needed this today while I was reviewing and reviewing whatever I could to give me the strength to pass the day. And we're going to need a lot of strength to pass these next days. And I pray it's only now the beginning of the miracle and that I should hang up this session and I'll hear more and more miracles.
Now listen to this, my dear soul sisters and brothers, so that we can pave the way from what we've been given from our Ushpizen guests. And this is Rabbi Trugman. Thank you, Avraham Ari Trugman, who helped me today, and the Rebbe Sikhas that helped me today. These personalities, the ones I just mentioned, that represent the seven mitzvahs constantly that we should be doing all day long, every day. They paved the way for their children. We are their children. And these characters in the Torah, these are the archetypal figures. Their every thought, their every word, their every action, every shape of what their reality was, their outer reality as well as their inner reality, in their inner soul makeup of their progeny, us. We need to repeat this powers of theirs in our generation because history is constantly unfolding and repeating and there's a constant replay of the same cycles and patterns and this is what's going to be our core power. Just like Adam have an all-inclusive soul to our patriarchs and our matriarchs, their powers, their deeds expressed in their reality. How many wars did they go through? How many tragedies and crises did they go through? We have a common soul root structure. And all the years that Avram and, and, and Sarah did not have children and how many intimate relations that they had that did not give birth to a child. But on a spiritual level, their unity, their intimacy, their love and wanting to bring children brought the power of all of the world's holy, righteous goyim that are going to help us and the people of today that know the truth, all of our, our seven North died friends and all of our Christian lovers of Israel, they're going to come to our aid and the truth will be told just like in the prophecy that they will come to our aid. These were the future converts that, that were given birth by the unborn children of Abraham and Sarah. Their action, their thoughts, impress their energy into both the physical and spiritual DNA of every also future Jewish soul. We got their nature, we got their nurture. The manner in which children are raised leaves an enormous imprint on the psychological, emotional, intellectual state, just as does the indelible genetic imprint of a parent to a child. Don't underestimate your soulful powers. It can get squeezed out of you because of such a challenge, trauma, and tragedy. The Rebbe taught us this. We have a choice. Do we let the enemy win within also? Dare not we let the enemy win out there. Dare not then let the enemy within win the war within. We have to hold on to the DNA of our neshama and to everything that we've been working so hard as a collective people And this is within each and every person, in every time and in every place. And it's such a profound level. All of Israel are the guarantors to one another. We are so bound together throughout our history. We will continue to be together. We will continue to be Am Yisrael Chai. They were our chariots. We're riding on their pathway. They blazed the trail already. And we've been gifted with this power of their their 
gifts. His our gifts. Wow, there's a beautiful story that it's just, I love birds. And we know that the Hebrew word for angel is a malach, and malach equals 91. And also, it's the same word of sukkah. And we're always enwrapped by Hashem's sukkah. We're always enwrapped by Hashem's love. It's a surrounding energy of protection and a spiritual embrace. No matter where we are, no matter what tragedy, no matter what trauma, we are constantly being lifted by Hashem and we are protected. Our body is not who we are. It's our neshama. And so the very energy that we felt in the sukkah is with us the whole year long. And today, especially right now, This an um, angelic energy is is with us right now. We're holding on to it. We need it right now. We see what we just got. I hope, like, like that uh, we realize the Shekhinah was resting upon our people, even though it seems like where is the Shekhinah? The Malach, the Sukkah, is the wings of the Shekhinah. May it just take us like the eagle. And the way the eagle puts the babies on top. So if arrows are coming to kill, the mother takes the hit so that the babies will be protected. Hashem, I call upon you. You're my eagle. You're our eagle. You have always... I know we're going to get through this. I know this is going to end. I know this is going to be over. But like, let's just make it over like now. Like no more. That's it. You're our angel, our protectorate. You're our eagle. You're protecting us. I know as a collective people we're protected, but please Hashem, protect every single individual in Eretz Yisrael and all over the world. On eagle wings we should be flying back with Mashiach. Seeing and Basar nine his protection with our own fleshy eyes. Shielding us, exposing the truth already to the world. Mashiach is described as waiting on a bird's nest. The word sipor actually is numerically equal to peace which ultimately the peace of Mashiach will bring to the entire world where the truth will be told and the truth will be known. And this inner peace attainable every year on Sukkot, we need to hold it for the rest of our days, especially now, as a protective nest. And I am giving a blessing. Who am I? But I'm just a simple servant trying to Share my heart's prayer with you and all the people. That every one of our people are protected with the Shekhinah's nest hovering over. Giving them the ability to have the inner peace. This protective nest on all sides. This wings of Mashiach protecting us from above. May there be miracles, no more casualties, no more. Just a total, like, victory. 
ending this from my mouth to God's big ears, infinite ears, endless ears. This is the angels of the workings of the chariot. I could just see, please, Hashem, all these chariots, like, you know, all the chariots, your chariots, miraculously making all the bombs be diffused, miraculously catching everyone and bringing our babies, our mothers, our children back. I quote you, Hashem. I'm challenging you. You love when our people challenge you. Chutzpah kedusha, Hashem, forgive me, but I'm doing what you want me to do. Here it says, you are our wings. You are our shina, our protection. Let you be honored. Let your name be known. You protect your loved ones in Eretz Yisrael, the safest place, the Rebbe said. It's time to be obstinate. It's time to demand. It's time to do what we can. The workings of our chariot must work now. Can you imagine? Hashem and His kindness gave me this today. And it gave me the strength. And I really hope it's giving you more strength. This is the working of Hashem's chariot. This description of the angels with six wings has a profound connection with the sukkah, which is six-sided cube. These six angels, they had two wings above, two wings in the middle, and two wings below. This six-wing angel would say, holy, holy, holy is Hashem. The whole world is full of his glory. Let the world see your glory. Let the world see your glory. Just like even better than the Six Day War. And even better than any other generation. We're in the Ichmas de Meshicha. We're right at the front labor pains right now of the delivery of our Mashiach. And I call out to you, Hashem, you are the workings of the chariot and you will bring the salvation and you will protect our people. We have a sukkah around us all year long. Let the nation see. Let your name not be mocked. Let the goyim see the hand of God. I'm a zealot for Hashem. I want to protect Hashem's name. We're here down to this earth and we protect each other's name. We're supposed to not say Lashon Hara. We're, we're supposed to honor every person and protect the sanctity of their Neshama's name. I want to protect the name of Hashem and I beg you Hashem. Protect your name, whether we deserve it, not deserve it. Oh my gosh, how much do we deserve? We deserve it more than we deserve. Look all the good that's happened in this world. Look how much good, how many people helping each other. There's so much good. And in that marriage, remember the story? Remember the story of Rabbi? Oh, it was about Shento. Yes. And there was a famine, and everyone was crying, and everyone was delirious from, from, from you know, no, no water. Crying, and a preacher came and said, because of your sin, that's why this is happening. And the Baal Shem Tov turned the world upside down. And he said to the preacher, and he said to the congregation, 
No. This is not but for a test. Your cherished mitzvahs. Hashem loves you. He's loved sick for you. He, he, this is not a punishment. He was just 17, 18 years old, the Baal Shem Tov. He had the chutzpah, the kedusha, to stand up there against the preacher who was whipping them with lashes because of your sins. And he stood up and he said, no, this is a test. He took everyone out and they were dancing in the fields and their tears of sorrow turned to tears of joy that Hashem loves his people. And all of a sudden, as the tears of joy were falling on the ground, the tears, the tears opened the heavens and the gates, and it started raining. Raining beautifully to show that the Baal Shem Tov was right. And ever since then, our Rebbe, starting from the Baal Shem Tov, the Magi, the the Alter Rebbe, all the way to the Labavitcher Rebbe, teaches us how to stay strong and feel faithful and feel joyful and feel Hashem's love, even in the midst of tragedy. Because we know Hashem loves us. He know, we know how every little deed He cherished. And every little deed is changing the world for the better and bringing so much salvation. And even though that we just seven days stayed in the sukkah and we had this stationary structure, this is our holy workings of the chariot. Not only was the sukkah movable in a sense, it took us to a transcendent passage to a realm beyond time and space. This time and space travel doesn't only occur during sukkah, but it's in our consciousness. I remember reading the Fridika Rebbe's letters in his memoirs. He said that we have the power to be almost like a jet. Get out of our head. Move out of what's happening into this ultra transcendent super consciousness. <clears throat> To be, able, <clears throat> to be able to then make the right moves with our body to do what we need to do to win this war in here as well as the war that's going out over there. Trust me, I'll say it again. My children are there. My grandson is there. My sister's there. My nephew, my dear nephew, is in the war in Jenin, just recently recruited in the army, and now he's in Jenin. May Hashem protect all of our children from this war. And so as we were shaking our lulav and all the four species, we were bringing this super conscious dimension of our soul's power to take us beyond time and space and even to a fifth dimension of time and space. <sighs> so that we can cope, that we can do what we can do to make a difference, so we can be counted on. Don't leave your prayer book. Don't be angry at God. I heard so many people say, I'm so angry at God. And I'm like, Hashem is my best friend. Do not be angry with him. Please, I beg the people, please, please. Our limited intellect cannot fathom Hashem's ways. He loves us. We can't understand how this is any but love. I call to defend Hashem's name. Sorry, maybe he doesn't want me to right now. But it was just, I just... I hurt for the people, I do. I'm hurting for the people, but I I just know that the way to, to get out of this is by doing whatever we can, derech, the way Hashem told us to get out of things. 
Remember the story? Titus came in, slashed the curtains, and blood was oozing out of, of the curtains to show us that our life force, our life force is our prayers, our learning. Learning Torah gives us the strength. And trust me, I feel like getting off and praying and praying, but I know so many people, hopefully, that if this helped me, that it'll help them. <clears throat> we gotta right now transcend time and space with our human consciousness as best we can. And then merge the worlds. Our faith will merge the angelic powers of Hashem, mighty warriors, to do what it needs to be done. So that the interfacing of the higher worlds with the miracles we need now Please, crystallizing and with a completion of like a victory and the victory of our soul that it that we you know like the time he says we have a battle going on we have on the one heart the panic the anxiety the, the compassion the pain but the other part of our heart battling Yes, we're human and we have every right to feel all those feelings, but at least not let it break us to the point where we can't help by praying, by learning, and doing whatever we can. And we went through just now Hoshana Rabbah and we were digging wells just like just like uh, Yitzchak did, and just like Avraham did. We said, please Hashem, all our Hashanah Rabbahs, we, we revisited all of our patriarchs and prayers. We weaved all together the previous holidays together. You know, Avram dug wells, and the Philistines back then dug the well. Uh, uh, you know, not dug it, but like uh, stopped it up. And Avram, as much as he tried and he did what he could, this is a representation metaphorically of Avraham's paving the way of the belief in one God. And what he shared with the world. To have faith in monotheism. He symbolically delved beneath the surface, seeking more than a superficial view of reality. We got to put our Baal Shem Tov's glasses on. Right now, more than ever, we see, I don't want to say anymore, but we have to see beyond the superficial view of reality. We have to dig deep within our soul. And reveal new levels of courage, new level of understanding that we can't understand. New levels of inspiration. We have to excavate this well of ours with the hard physical labor of Dhavni and learning and mitzvot and tzedakah and spiritually advance. We need to take an assertive action. And we do need to discipline ourselves as best we can not to let the vision of the seemingly reality freeze us. God forbid, break us. God forbid, worse. Cry if you have to. We need to cry. But we need to also help. Look at Avram, after Avram, and after everything that the Goyim did to stop up his wells, this symbolic war, this stopping up, stuffing up of the wells. Yitzhak began to redig these wells. This was his determination to continue in his father's footsteps. 
ensuring that Abraham's teachings took firm root to the world. Indeed, without Yitzhak's labor, Judaism would have ended before it had really begun. The Philistines filling up the wells represented the inevitable obstacles and oppositions to holiness that one is sure to encounter on one's path. Indeed, as we read in the Torah, Yitzhak not only re-dug Abraham's wells, but all, also excavated new ones. Some wells he gave the same names of his father, and others he gave new names. Significantly, the last of the wells he named Be'er Sheva, the wells of seven, which reminds us of the seven directions we, well, the six directions and then it landing in our heart as a, as a seventh place. This was for a reason. When Yitzchak dig new wells, it was the clearest indication that he had chosen to follow his father's footsteps. For Avram was the classic model of an innovator and a path forger. The well of seven in this context can certainly be seen as the allusion to the seventh day of Sukkot, or Shana Rabbah, when we just re-dug their wells. We just excavated all our soul powers and we carved out our new channels to receive these circular blessings as we were going round and round. This is empowering us to dedicate ourselves once again with the firm determination to keep them fresh and present in our mind and our heart throughout the year. This is the time that we can commit ourselves to our previous visions and our resolutions to open ourselves up to uncovering the new sources of water, of Torah, to the new sources of the Kedusha that we need right now to galvanize all our powers to keep strong. And trust me, I need it just as much, more than ever. Please pray. I please pray that the words coming from my heart enter my heart <laughs> as well as yours. Interesting, it says here, which I've heard this before, that now what? Now that the holidays are over, now we got to do tshuva on our tshuva and not looking at the negative. Because we know tshuva is an end, a never-ending process. No matter how close you seem to get to Hashem, no matter how much deeper, wiser, and more mature that we have become, there's always more to accomplish in the realm of the soul. We can always make tshuva on tshuva to deepen our awareness how we can evolve more, how we can elevate our consciousness to a higher level. Not in a form of looking at the lack, but in a sense, making tshuva on our good deeds. How we can elevate it even higher. how we can bring it to a new level of awareness. This is us redigging our wells. We already dug them. We already did the tshuva. We already said, well, we could have had more kavana, we could have done more, we could have, you know, had more time when we learned, have it learned in a better way, whatever. We could have helped more people learn. But this is a level of redigging wells to say, to focus on what we did do right. We did dig wells, but now let's redig it to a higher level.
tshuva on tshuva, making our lives and the lives of others better. what we did in Elm, what we did in Tishrei. And Rabbi Trugman so beautifully, Rabbi Ira Trugman, I have to give credit where credit is due, this really helped me today. <clears throat> when we read about the stories of the walls of Yericho come tumbling down after Israel was surrounded Oh my gosh, can you imagine I was reading this today while, and we all were, I mean, in the sense of the, the story of Yericho. I just kept thinking, okay, I'm going to hear the shofar blown, Mashiach's coming, the, the walls are crumbling down with a blink of an eye, Keher of Ayin, this, this birth pain, finally, finally, triumphantly, as the walls of Yericho collapsed. This is the exact pattern. We made this circuit six times. And then we made a seventh, right? We did six and then we made the one. Representing the seven circuits. On the seventh day when, when we were surrounded. On the seventh day, they made seven circuits and the shofar blew and triumphantly, the walls of Yericho collapsed. That's what I'm meditating right now. That's what we have to think. We have to think positive. We think good, it will be good. Think, try, try. We just got the opportunity, this final opportunity to break down the last walls between us and Hashem, between us and others, between us and our highest potential of our own self. And why were we celebrating and why were we supposed to be celebrating Simcha's Torah? Because Hashem forgave us. He forgave us. Hashem forgave us. We can't say Hashem's name in vain. We're not allowed to. And so we can't say a bracha that He forgave us if He didn't. was dancing, truly dancing, as a weapon against the inner avenger, as a weapon when we use that inner avenger weapon, it's a weapon, it really is a holy weapon. It's going to be a battle going on here. It's definitely going to be a battle. But we're going to win. We're, we've won. We've always won. We've always won. We're going to win. Now, I'm just going to hang up this, this emergency call to action and I'm going to expect a lot of calls and I'm going to be putting this together 
and I'm here. I wish I could take a plane there and just help there, but again, I find myself like with hands tied. So I guess I should remain here to be able to help from here. That's all I can say and do whatever I can, and hopefully you'll join me. I love you all. And I better go. I'm going to start calling family. It's about time they might be awake. I love you all. And we'll get through this together. We will see the miracle. And we will... One day have the right to demand the answers. Yechi Adonenu Moreenu Ramamenu Melech HaMashiach L'Olam Ba'ed Yechi Adonenu Moreenu Rabbeinu Melech HaMashiach L'Olam Ba'ed Yechi Adonenu Moreenu Rabbeinu Melech HaMashiach L'Olam Ba'ed Ad Masai to let go. So much more to share. Behold on the mountain the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaim peace. These are the words. These are the words of Hashem Rabba. Hashem, these are the words we said. We could not say this in vain. We could not say it for nothing. We're anticipating the redemption of thousands of years on a personal and national level. Please, no more doom and gloom. Just good tidings. Please, Hashem, peace. Tchiasa meetings, but right now until Tchiasa meetings, we have to revive the living dead that just went through such a horror. Behold, the day of God is coming, and your plunder shall be shared within you. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to wage war. And the city will be captured, and the houses shall be plundered. I don't even want to read this. This is what I was reading. I'll read the end. And God, my God, shall come, and all the holy ones with you. And it shall come to pass, and on that day shall be known to God, neither day nor night. And it shall come to pass, that evening it shall be light, and it shall come to pass, on that day, the living water shall go out from Jerusalem. And it will come to pass that everyone left and the nations who came up against Jerusalem will go up and from year to year will prostrate themselves to the King, our God, to celebrate the holiday of Sukkot. And on that day, humanity will become a single entity, just transforming this fractured world into a global village of peace, cooperation, mutual concern. On Sukkot, in both the Haftors of the first day and the climactic prayer of Shana Rabba, we pray for the arrival of this good news, finally. Who will proclaim peace for all humanity after so many years of war, plunder, and hatred? This final ingathering will ultimately take us back to the Garden of Eden, where we will be gathered once again with our loved ones to enjoy the world as we know it could and should be. That's my final seal. That's all of our final seal. That's all we want. That's all we've ever wanted. With every breath we take, we keep wanting, we keep yearning, we keep 
pleading, we keep begging. And God knows it. The seal of Yom Kippur and Hoshana Raba Place me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Zeal is as strong as the grave. Its coals are coals of flaming fire. The seal on the heart alludes to tapping into our hearts continually throughout the day's days. The seal of our strength, of our neshama, May the words that I just shared be sealed in your heart, giving you the strength to help those that don't, that need you. They always needed you. Hashem always needed you. Please call to this call to action. With a victory march, we will not let them win. We are winning. Hashem is going to win this war, and the Shiach is coming. I love you. Home of them. Love you all.